Hi, it's Mike Leahy, Swan TV. Welcome to one of our Swansea shows. I am so happy to have two amazing guests with me today. I have Dan Staveley, and great to see you, Dan. Thank you very much, Mike. One of the founders for Elysium, and if you don't know what Elysium is, you're going to learn a great amount today. And we also have Shani Martin, formerly known as Shani from The Wave. <laughs> it is so lovely to be here. Thank you for having me here today. So we can have a laugh and a joke and talk about their different projects that they've got. And I'm going to give you a clue now. I've got a chess set here and I'm going to take out something. Which one shall I take out? Shall it be a bishop? No. No, not a bishop. The king? No. no. A pawn? No. Oh, oh yes. A castle. A castle. <laughs> right, bear that in mind. That's what we might be talking about later. Castles, are they in the sky? Are they in the square? Where are they? Okay, let's get on with this. I'll just put this out of the way. Swallow this, and away <laughs> we go. Okay, let me talk to Dan first, because he raced here today, and he said he's only got four hours to record the show. <laughs> Don't get bored. Okay, Dan, it's great to have you here. Thank you very much. As you know, we, we are in Elysium, in one of your studios, here, right now. We are, yeah. Yeah, so... Why don't you tell us about Elysium as it is at the moment and okay. what you do because it's something that not many people know about. Okay. Um, well, basically at the minute we run over four buildings in Swansea. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got the old Barons Nightclub, which is College Street, which was our main gallery and studios. Mansell Street, which is a studio project. Orchard Street, where we're sat in. So there's 63 artist studios here. Uh, and then we've got 210 High Street and 211 High Street, which is a bar and a music venue. Uh, so Friday, Saturday is bands. Uh, Wednesday is live drawing. Uh, we do creative writing classes in there. And then 211, which is next door, which is part of the same building then, um, is the education centre. So we're working with a project called Connect and Flourish, uh, which was funded by the Arts Council of Wales. Um, so we're working with uh, neurodiverse adults, um, doing workshops uh, and arts workshops. So the idea is then, um, it's a conversation between, um, between them and uh, artist practitioners. So it's there to train both um, and to help um, kind of break down barriers to access. Um, so that's one of the projects we're going on there. We've got four galleries inside of 210. Uh, so we've got the main gallery, which is at the back, which was a nightclub. Uh, and then we've got three of the smaller galleries in there as well then. Um, I think that's about it, really. I mean, there's quite a lot going on there. So yeah. There is an amazing amount. Mm -hmm. And we are sitting in one of the studios at the moment, which we've converted into a TV studio, as you can see. And I like the bar. Yeah. People pass by and put their head in, maybe, and think, <clears throat> it doesn't look like most bars. It's not all frills and it's not fancy definitely not. but <laughs> it is so friendly when you walk in there yeah. you're just made welcome yeah. and you can sit down and there's the tables and chairs are not new they don't match it's just <laughs> it's just really comfortable it's like being at home really isn't it we try to yeah we try to make it yeah because it was it's kind of like in the day it's the coffee shop which supports the gallery so the idea is you can come in you can see the work sit down and have a coffee um, and then, yeah, I mean, we do um, a, a, knit, a knitting group in there. So Anne Jordan, one of our founder members, uh, she set up a knitting group in there. Um, so they come in every Wednesday, I think. Um, so there's lots of different things going on in the day. So again, we just try to make it as accessible as possible, really. There is no judgment. People just come in and hopefully no one feels, um, you know, it doesn't feel funny or a bad vibe in there then, so... What's the number in the high street? 210 high street. Go to 210. There's a blue door, the same as there is here. <laughs> Open the door, go inside, and you'll have a relaxed, happy time. And the coffee, the coffee's good, although I'm generally a tea drinker. <laughs> but, okay, Dan, just tell us a little bit about how you got to this stage, really. Okay, well, um, I moved to Swansea 2000. Um, I got a Millennium Award. Um, uh, and then I teamed up with uh, brilliant uh, Laura Reynolds um, and she opened a gallery. I was doing um, photography um, and doing dark rooms, uh, setting up dark rooms in and around Swansea. Sh Shani's a photographer as well. Or... Yeah, I believe well, so, yeah. <laughs> 
look, I dabbled. <laughs> a little bit of training. <laughs> okay. So, yep. so that was, uh, so we, um, so Laura then, obviously me and Laura teamed up. We then went in and around. We ended up in College Street in a gallery called Exposure. During that time, I was working as a full-time photographer, commercial photographer. Uh, and so it wasn't, this was kind of more of a hobby at this point for me. Uh, and then we met um, a group of students came in. So it was basically Anne Jordan, Jonathan, Rian, uh, that kind of year or that kind of two years within there, which was around 2005, mm -hmm. um, started volunteering and basically they kind of took over the space. Um, we then decided to split. Uh, Laura wanted to do more education, uh, murals uh, and kind of make money from that kind of art and move into that way. Uh, and we wanted just run um, a gallery, really, kind of like 1960s, 70s, New York kind of vibe. Um, just pure chaos. Uh, <laughs> and no one knew what was going on. Uh, so we did. So we split. And then uh, Jonathan Powell and Ann Jordan and me set up Elysium, reconstituted. And then, yeah, and then it was born on High Street, basically just where um, the Old Way Centre is, where the students' flats are now. It's all been flattened, but it was in there originally uh, in 2007. So, yeah, and then that was it. We didn't mention the gallery, the art gallery at the back in the high street. There is a most fantastic gallery and you get some incredible artists there. Yeah. You had some Norwegian artists recently. We've got eight Norwegian artists in there now. So the show finishes uh, this weekend. So make sure you get down and see that then. So they travelled from, we paid them to come over. Uh, they stayed for just over a week to install the exhibition. Uh, yeah, and that's, I think that's a touring exhibition, so that's been arranged with uh, a couple of people from Indigene, which is um, another artist collective based in Wrexham then. So. And, and you had the Morrison Authors Choir come down. They did, yeah, they, they opened it, yeah. So Scott is our bar manager, he organised that. So uh, Thursdays and Fridays we always do live musics. Uh, we do a lot of um, songwriting. Um, a lot of open mics with original work, a lot of young people's magicians, uh, musicians, not magicians, sorry. <laughs> magician, uh, musicians, sorry. You've got worse. a poetry night as well. A we do a poetry night, night, we do a spoken word night, yeah, and comedy. So there's loads of stuff goes on there in the in the evenings then. And Scott is the, the bar manager then, so he runs, he's in charge of all of that then. So There's yeah. no need for anyone in Swansea to feel lonely, is there? Definitely not, no. <laughs> there's always someone in there then, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And I must tell you that I spoke to some of the Orpheus male voice choir when they came and they said that they had the most appreciative audience in the Elysium than they'd had for a long, long time because everybody stopped. Yeah. Even though some of them were drinking, they just stopped and watched. Yeah. And then wonderful applause and yeah. they carried on a little bit longer than they were going to, I yeah. think. See, that's a good, if you play into a gallery audience, we're used to listening. Yeah. yeah so was... yeah, so it was brilliant, it really was good. And it complemented the opening really well. You know, I think them performing and, and doing that then was a piece of art in itself then. So it was uh, it was really good. So anyone who's interested, right inside your front door on the high street, there's a list of all the events that goes on monthly, isn't there? Yeah. So well there's a weekly a monthly one. Uh and also if you go onto the website, so it's um Elysium dot Elysium Gallery dot com. Um, if you'll pop up then so you can go in either the English or Welsh version and then you can put your email in there uh, to go on the main list we don't keep that so obviously that just go and then we send out one newsletter a week and that just has a weekly outline of everything that's going on in that week and you'll get one just one a week then so you can see exactly what's going on there and what you want to join and how it's all happening so it's really really good and on our what's on page on Swan TV website We've got all these events as well, so you can catch up there. Dan, that's absolutely brilliant. No, no I, problem. I, I just love it at Elysium. That's why I, I'm pleased you're here, because it's, uh, it's something everyone needs to know about. Yeah, well, we've converted you to coffee drinker, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> you have. <laughs> Let me talk to Shani. Hi. <laughs> How known, are you? I've known you for years. Many, many years. We're both like Peter Pan, aren't we? <laughs> and you, yeah, well, actually, you you were really young when you started with the wave, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I tell people I started when I was ten, but uh, <laughs> yeah. no, I was twenty-one when I started. <laughs> and I remember doing outside shows, all the shows that were in yeah. Castle Square. Yeah. I looked at one the other day that I'd recorded, and you're there. <laughs> oh my gosh! What, what colour hair did I have then? <laughs> I, 
Was it could have been blonde? I think it was more, yeah. Yeah. More of a natural colour. But I love that red. <laughs> or is that your natural? Uh, yeah, no, this is the yeah, this is the natural. That's natural. Yeah, okay. this is the natural colour. <laughs> <clears throat> It'd be easier if it was. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I saw it was multicoloured. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It changes. Absolutely fantastic. So you've gone from the wave? Yes. And I don't know what's happening at the wave now, but it's is it gone now or is it still? Um, so the wave is still um, there and you've got Lee and Claire on breakfast who are the local presenters. Um, Swansea Sound sadly um, lost its name, but it's become then part of Greatest Hits Radio. So the presenters that were there, are they gone now? Is it all done centrally? Yeah. That's such a pity. Do you know, Tim Davey, who is the Director General of the BBC, said at a, broad, at a dinner to the Royal Television Society just before Christmas, he said, the future of television and radio is local. So what did they do? They cut all the local radio stations out on the BBC and online, which is what we're doing. We're doing online streaming TV. So I think the future for us is bright. But I can't believe he said that's the future and then they just get rid of everything <laughs> as well as like the independence. Like, Absolutely. Like the way. So that's the past. You're that's now past. in a new life. I am. <laughs> So I am now, um, and I'm absolutely loving it, I am the corporate fundraiser for Wales Air Ambulance. It's right. really exciting for me. Um, so when I worked at the Wave, I can remember back in 2001 when Wales Air Ambulance started, because it started with one helicopter in Swansea Airport. Now the guys used to come in and we used to interview them to you know, really promote the charity. Um, so it's kind of like come full circle that now I'm, I get to actually be dedicated to them so I cover all of Wales I'm a corporate fundraiser so I work with a lot of businesses um, but I also head up our castles in the sky oh, campaign don't say another oh, word oh, <laughs> <laughs> so let's just recap back now and just tell us about the castles and how many and what they're doing and what is the aim okay so castles in the sky um, it is a big public art trail that's coming to Swansea and Mumbles in 2024. So the trail will start on the 6th of July and go right the way through till the 15th of September. Um, now we will have over 30 large, this is the small one, this is one of our naked small <laughs> castles. It's very naked. Um, and we'll have over 30 of the large ones. How tall are the large ones? No, so they're just over two metres. Wow, gosh. Tall. Um, we did actually have um, six on like a teaser trail throughout August within the city centre and mm -hmm. down at the skate park as well. Mm -hmm. Just to get, you know, raise awareness and let people know that this is coming and to build some interest so they could actually see what they will look like. Who painted those? So we had six amazing artists. Uh, we had Barry John, MBE. We had Diana Brooke um, from Narbeth, we had Marnie Maury from uh, Worcestershire, which I can't mm -hmm. say. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, <laughs> Louise Jones um, from Llanelli. Uh, we also had Keely Clark from Carmarthen. So we've got you know a wide range of artists. A lot of them local, so a lot of them Welsh, which is incredible, and it's really nice. So. We'll have 30 of these out on the trail. There'll be an app, there'll be a map that people can go around, follow the trail, find these castles. And, you know, it, it's it's a really fun sort of family thing that people can do. It doesn't have to be with families. You could even have like maybe a business network could even have like a walking meeting mm -hmm. and do part of the trail. There's loads of things. Then at the end of the trail, the large ones will get auctioned off. And that's where, of course, um, all the funds raised from that will then go to Wales Air Ambulance. Right. So again, it's, it's, it's finding another way of trying to raise not just awareness of the charity, but to raise money for the charity as well. Um, we need to raise £11.2 million every year. Is that all? <sighs> oh my God, I that's know. a staggering so amount. It's a staggering amount. So that's four helicopters. We have many RRVs as well. So we've got rapid response vehicles as well. Um, and you know we when i like, like i said when they started in 2001 in swansea airport it was five days a week um out of swansea airport one helicopter now um so from the end of 
2020. It then became 24 seven. So we're 24 hours out of Cardiff as well. Um, and it's not getting you as it was from getting you from your incident to the hospital quickly. It's no longer that. It's getting basically A&E to you quickly. So all yeah. of the, you know, every single helicopter, every single rapid response vehicle, um, the equipment that they carry from bloods to defibs to like literally, you know, we've got incredible equipment. However, all of this then is funded by the people of Wales. We are a charity. So, you know, there is no other help. We are asking this. But of course, you know, with Wales Air Ambulance, it doesn't discriminate against anybody. It's like, you know, from very young to, you know, anywhere. And we just know it's a service that is, it's a vital life-saving service that people really People need. don't want, really. They don't want to have it happen to them. But when they are in an emergency, it's there. Absolutely. Nobody wakes up in the morning and thinks, oh, I'm going to have the Wales Air Ambulance today. <laughs> That's never what you think. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we talk to past patients. And because of the fact that we can, you know, treat you at the roadside now, we have those consultants. We have those, um, you know, the doctors, the specialists um, who can go to those incidents. And people will think, oh, so if you're, you've got a base in North Wales that helicopter only covers that area. That's not the case, because bearing in mind, it's a helicopter. So quite often, if we've, if we've got the best person, um, like a, a critical hair practitioner or consultant, we can get them straight up to North Wales and treat that person then at the roadside. It just gives people such, you know, more chance of survival, you mm. know, because you can, we can administer bloods. We can have what's called like a Lucas, um, which basically does um, chest compressions there and then for you um we can you know it's just it's incredible what our um team can do but nobody quite understands how important it is but the fact is that it's all charity run and it's all funded by the people of wales you've got shops as well haven't we you? do yes we have shops all over from cardiff to carnarvon to bangor to wrexham to swansea so yeah. In Swansea, yeah. there's how many are there in Swansea? It's we've got, so we've got literally one just round the corner. It's one on College Street. Yeah, there yeah. is. We've got a lovely big one there. Yeah. Love that one. There's a lot, the a lot of the so glassware fantastic. above the bar. Yes. It's come from there. Oh. So John, we, we walked around looking for various different stuff. So we all, a lot of the stuff we buy is obviously second hand. So the Amazing. Yeah, I this one is because it's on College Street, it's so close. Fantastic. So quite, you guys lot, have yeah. helped support yeah, yeah, we, Wales well, Arang, yeah. but thank yeah, you. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> it's all the glass at the bar, so it's good. See? Now, Sharni is going to pester me again, aren't you? Come on, Sharni. <laughs> I've always got so much information to give, always. Yeah. Um, but this one, so I've told you about the large castles. Now, this one is one of our small castles. Um, with the small ones, um, this is given the opportunity to community groups and also to schools as well. So this is actually Whitestone Primary School's Naked Castle before they get to paint it. Um, so they've committed, um, so different schools, they commit to raising a thousand pounds. Um, they'll raise a thousand pounds for the Wales Air Ambulance, which is incredible. So they'll do things throughout the year. Um, they get this castle, every single child will have then an opportunity to decorate it. So whether every child gets maybe put their thumbprint on it or however they decide to do it. And with Whitestone, it's exciting for them because this year they turn 50. So, not this year, next year, sorry. In 2024, they turn 50. So that it kind of all ties up with it. And mm -hmm. it's, um, but yeah, it, at the end of the trail, then they actually get to keep it. Yeah. So it goes then back to the school, back to the community group. So Western Bay Adoption Service, their users will have got one of these, so they'll be um, decorating theirs. There's many other schools in like Clanetley and everywhere who have got these. But we still have a few left if there are any other schools out there who want to take part. If you're a community group or a school yeah. or any business, can it be a business? They can sponsor one of the large ones. You can sponsor one of the large ones. A great <laughs> opportunity to support air ambulance. I, I would highly recommend it. So it's been a fantastic show. Thanks for coming along, Dan and Sean. It's been oh, absolutely great to meet you. Great to meet you. Yeah. Great to meet you yeah. Oh, if you're not following us, we've got the app, Swan TV. 
Um, you can easily find that. So download the app and follow us on your smartphone. And if you've got an interesting story or know someone who is interesting, let us know. If you're a band, a singer, play an instrument, tell jokes, let us know. Let us include you in a show. Let's make them more interesting. So it's Mike Lee, Swan TV. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.